I'm Sarah and I lead the IPD master's program. Um, Integrated product design is a two-year master's program situated here in the School of Engineering. Um, my appointment is actually in the School of Design, um, and we are currently residing in a building that is a Wharton building, which um, really represents kind of the approach of integrated product design. IPD is really about um, bringing design, engineering, and business together for the purpose of creating new products and services. Um, and so our students come from the three backgrounds. We have students with engineering backgrounds, students with, with design backgrounds, and students with business backgrounds who are interested in learning about the other disciplines and how to bring them together and also how to work with people across disciplinary boundaries. Um, and I always show this slide when I talk about the program, which has these like three lovely circles that shows how um, nicely the the three disciplines work together. Um, but in reality, it's a lot messier than that. Um, and I think it's a lot more interesting than that. And so um, things happen where students from an engineering background, a business background, and a, and a design background might use the same word and mean something different by it. So a prototype might mean something different. Um, so our students really um, learn how to speak the language of other disciplines and learn to become translators between disciplines um, that enables them to really take on leadership roles once they are um, graduated from the program and working in industry. Um, I like to think about the program not just as a program, but um, we have kind of an overall mission and a vision about um, how we want our students to experience the world, what we want them to learn, and then what we want them to take forward with them as they move forward. Um, and so we have several core values that underpin the program. And I'm not going to go through all of them, um, but collaboration is a really big part of the program. As I mentioned, students come from dis different disciplines and learn how to work together across disciplines. Um, we embrace experimentation and tackle hard challenges. Um, and are always looking at how to leverage design engineering and business to um, move forward um, a mission around designing for equity. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that um, we teach and learn and practice in the program. Um, as I mentioned, we are in um, a Wharton building right now that is, it's called Tangen Hall. Um, it's a brand new building that opened just a couple of years ago. And um, that's where the studio where the program is based is, although students do take classes all across campus. Um, but I wanted to just give folks a flavor for kind of what the experience of the program might look like. Um, so this is a picture of our studio space. Um, where students are, you know, living and working. Um, it's actually a lot messier right now than it is in this picture, but gives you sort of a flavor for the space. Um, also in the building, we have uh, different fabrication facilities. There's a maker space on the first floor. This is um, a space right adjacent to our studio where there's a CNC, there's a mechatronics lab. Um, so students spend time in the studio. They spend time in these labs making physical products. Um, also spend time in lecture halls, um, taking classes, giving presentation, learning from faculty, um, learning, this is another angle on our studio, but learning from guest lecturers in addition to faculty, um, learning in small groups where um, more kind of studio type teaching where students are working on projects and getting advice from faculty. Um, and I think one of the more interesting things about the program is that students spend a lot of time learning from each other. Um, and again, this is because students have different backgrounds, different life experiences that they bring to the program. And so they always have a lot to offer. I love this picture because um, I did not ask them to pose. I literally came out of my office one day and this was what was happening. But I think it really represents um, kind of the collaborative spirit of um, the program. Um, so we typically recruit students who are a couple of years out of undergraduate, um, again, from design, engineering, or business backgrounds who want to have kind of this broader approach to product design. Um, and students come from all over the country and, in fact, all over the world to join IPD. Um, the program is quite small. We have about 30 students per class, and it's a two-year program. Um, so students really do get to know each other pretty well as part of the program. Um, and the program actually has two different variants. 
Um, there's an MIPD for students from design engineering or business backgrounds who are really looking for that interdisciplinary perspective on product design, um, who take a wider variety of courses in design engineering and business. And I'll get into a little bit more detail on the curriculum um, later. Um, but then for students with an undergraduate engineering engineering degree who want to continue to focus on um, engineering in their future careers, um, but want to learn a little bit about design and business, they can take this MSE IPD. Um, and so there the emphasis is more on technology and manufacturing processes, including coursework in advanced CAD CAM and mechatronics, and students take the majority of their courses in the School of Engineering. So if you have an engineering background, you can kind of choose which of these degrees is the right fit for you based on your career goals and what you want to be do, what you want to be learning in the program and what you want to be doing after the program is over. Um, the core of the program is really the studio curriculum. And the way that that works is um, there's, whether you're in the MSc or the MIPD, you take classes together. The first semester is design process. It's really focused on making a physical product and students work on individual projects where they really design, prototype, and execute their ideas. The second semester is problem framing. Um, those are team projects. The first project is a digital product, and the second project is always a client project. And that class really takes a step back and says, why would you make something in the first place? Um, and so students really learn about design research and design strategy and how to take into account multiple factors when they are um, deciding what they should design. And so by the end of the first year, students have um, a physical project, a digital project and a client project in their portfolio. And then the second some, the second year is a final project where, again, students work in teams, they pick topics, and they start with a problem that they're interested in addressing and design a product at the end of the two semesters. And so again, that can be a physical product or a digital product. IPD started as more of a focus on physical product design, but as the world has evolved and the courses and um, opportunities for students to learn across the university and the School of, the uh, School of Engineering have expanded, um, we have students that focus as much on digital as, as physical product design. Um, but an example of a final project um, from last year, for example, was there was a team of students who were working in classrooms where students um, had autism and um, challenges learning things like um, how to push buttons or what the right level of um, you know, pressure is when you're touching your phone. And they ended up designing a physical device that goes with, with an app that where students can learn skills um, and build on those skills and get feedback on how they're doing on those skills and teachers can also get feedback. Um, so they start with a, an opportunity space and end up developing um, a final product in the end. Um, in addition to the studio curriculum, as I mentioned, for the MIPD students, the other courses that students take are either product design, design for manufacturability, or how to make things. And then they take one elective in design, engineering, and business, and two open electives. Whereas in the MSE students, the core classes are designed for manufacturability and design of mechatronic systems. And they take one class in design and business and two additional engineering electives. So you can sort of start to see by the courses that students take how the different aspects of the degrees are um, differentiated. Um, and then I just have a couple more slides to give you a sense of the program, um, but I wanted to share kind of what students do when they graduate because um, integrated product design covers a pretty wide range. There's a lot of different pathways that students can take, and those are really driven by what students' experiences are before they come into the program, which kinds of classes they take when they're in the program. For example, they could take, um, you know, their their engineering class could be a rehabilitation engineering and their design class could be an architecture of health class. And then they can end up working in innovation in, in healthcare or um, healthcare device design. Whereas if they take their design class as a user experience design and their engineering class as a computer science class, they might become a user experience designer. 
Um, and so there's different kind of pathways that students can create, but these are sort of the clusters. There's some that are much more focused on the integration of the three disciplines, like product designer, UX researcher, user experience designer. Some students lean more into the intersection of design and business and get jobs as product managers or digital business designers. Some lean more into the intersection of design and engineering um, and end up as an interaction designer or a hardware engineer or a robotics engineer. Um, and others focus on that interaction intersection between engineering and business and end up as program managers or software developers. Um, so there is this kind of core solid focus, um, but also a lot of different pathways that students can take. Um, and so we try to work really closely with students to help them figure out like what the right path is for them and which, um, you know, what the right path is and what classes they should take to get that path. Um, and then um, this is just, I love this picture of students upon graduation. Um, I've been leading the IPD program for about 12 years now. Um, and one of the things that I love is seeing the transformation that happens over the course of two years. So there's a lot to learn and it's really hard. We really push students outside of their comfort zones. You know, if they have a background in design, suddenly they're taking engineering classes at, that, at a level that they never have before. Not suddenly, we, we prepare them with foundation classes, but, or if they have a background in, you know, hardcore technical engineering, suddenly we're asking them um, to think differently about the products that they design and develop. Um, but overall, we're really kind of preparing them to be strategic problem solvers who can pull um, knowledge from multiple disciplines and who really have the ability to lean into learning new technologies, learning new approaches to problem solving as they move further in their careers. Um, if you want to kind of get a sense of what the program is like, I would encourage you to uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, the students do a great job of running our Instagram account um, and you can just get a sense of like, what are the kinds of projects students work on and what is life like um, in the program. Um, and then just some specifics about the application process. Applications are due February 1st. The GRE is optional. Um, we do require a personal statement, a portfolio, letters of recommendations and transcripts. Um, and just so you know, we, because we have students with different backgrounds applying, we definitely evaluate portfolio is differently. But the goal of the portfolio is just to understand what are students' skills, what kinds of projects do they work on, how do they approach problems, and how can they tell stories about themselves and their work and what they're interested in. Um, we do require the TOEFL for international applicants, and then there's a couple of um, links here for more information about um, how to apply and what our admissions requirements are. And then again, if you want to learn more about the program, you can also go to our website, um, which has a lot of project examples, which I didn't really go into today for a lack of time. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, so I don't know if you noticed, but there are several questions about IPD in the Q&A feature. Um, should I, I read them off to you and you want to respond live or would you like to handle Yeah, it? I can. I think, yeah, that would be great, actually. Okay, great. So the first one is work experience favored or necessary for the program? So work experience is not necessary for the program, um, but it is, you know, we like to see either work experience or, you know, summer internships or something outside of academic experience, but we do accept students who come straight out of undergrad. We aim for um, diversity in our class, so diversity of discipline, diversity of levels of work experience, and diversity of uh, country of origin and interest. So um, it's not necessary, but it can be helpful. Great. And so regarding the portfolio, it uh, seems to require 15 to 25 um, images. Is that a strict requirement? And also, um, if the page layout is readable and highlights the work um, will work for the portfolio. So as long as it's uh, the layout is readable and highlights your work, is that okay? Yeah. So I would say this. Um... <laughs> Imagine that the people who are looking at the portfolios are looking at a lot of portfolios all day long. Um, so try not to, one of, there's two reasons for the image requirement. One is that the file takes forever to load and download. And two is that it's very overwhelming. So I wouldn't say we, you know, kick you out if you 
go over or under the, the image requirements, um, but try to really think about what are the most important images that you need to tell the story that you want to tell and highlight those images. Don't just throw every image that you have about your project or the process. All right, great. And someone has an interesting background, a bachelor's degree in music and one year of work experience in UX design. Are they eligible for the MIPD program option? Yeah, I mean, I would say you might be. So we do have foundation classes that students take um, who don't have backgrounds in the three disciplines. And every year there's one, maybe two students who are required to take the business, the design and the engineering foundation classes. So if you don't have a background in one of those three, but have some work experience, um, you might still be a good candidate, but you might just be required to take an extra foundation class. All right, great. Uh, I think there's one more question um, that I'm gonna take before we move on to the next presentation. Uh, would an IPD degree keep doors open for a variety of design-related engineering careers versus a standard mechanical engineering degree? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that so if you're taking a mechanical engineering master's and if you're taking the MSc and IPD, probably the biggest difference is that you will have from IPD, you'll have a broader portfolio of projects that include a design perspective and a business perspective. Some of the coursework that you're taking is going to be the same, but those core IPD studio classes where you're kind of actually designing products and producing that work um, is different. And you probably get more detail in terms of like doing design research and understanding stakeholder needs than you would in the, with a more traditional mechanical engineering degree. Um, so those are some of the differences. It might open more doors to, to jobs with the word design in the title, I would say. <laughs> 